Um, I, I don't usually like to read lyrics out on the show, but I, I kind of want to read this one. Um, I've been navigating my way through the mind-numbing reality of a godless existence, which at this point in my hollow and vapid life has erased what little ambition I've got left. What a nice ditty. <laughs> <laughs> what an uplifting, <laughs> what an uplifting ditty. Uh, but all jokes aside, like I feel like, is that something you were going through, Stefan, or as, as you were writing that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think we're, the four of us are all pretty nihilistic and pessimistic. Um, and this song was kind of um, me sort of grappling with that and writing uh, the first love song I've ever written for my girlfriend at the same time. <laughs> so it um, just kind of feels like um, these days a lot of the world is trash, but um, it's nice to kind of come across a person who can make it a little bit more tolerable. So I, I have to imagine that's, that's, that's complicated because you're right, not that someone can give you the idea that um, everything will be okay, but that's, that there is room for light in a life that seems so, sort of meaningless sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of um, the thesis of this band. I mean, I think, I think that the four of us grapple with a lot of um, dark things, but... Um, our partners and this band is kind of uh a shining point in our uh in the in the darkness so it's a it's something that's really positive for us and um we get to do something really productive with our angst i guess i'm always trying to figure out whether happiness is somewhere else or like what it means to me personally that i sometimes think that happiness is somewhere else like mm -hmm. oh if i can only do this yeah. thing i'll be really really happy or you know when i was living in st john's well maybe if i get out of the city i'll be really really happy <laughs> or maybe now if i move back to st john's i'll be really really happy and as exactly and i've heard you talk about this too yeah. there was this idea that if pup or if a band you were in became a really successful band which you guys have then all of a sudden oh well all the pieces are locked together and everything will be happy but you, you guys have had to kind of how do I put this without being a bummer, reconcile with the fact that that's not always necessarily the case. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think kind of what we're referring to is the what they call the geographic cure and iterations thereof. Um, and just thinking that changing your surroundings is what's going to help you. But ultimately, uh, it's, uh, it's an internal journey, for lack of a, a less cheesy word. Um, and until you kind of have made peace with who you are and what you feel about yourself, you're not going to find happiness unless, like, even if you go somewhere else or do a different job or, or whatever. So it needs to it needs to come from within. Yeah, within it needs to. Else. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I wouldn't say something as romantic as a as self acceptance, but. Um, you know, trying to be a bit more realistic about things. Ste Stefan, when you mentioned that, you know, you, you tried to write a love song here because this was about someone in your life who through this bleakness would give you um, glimmers of hope. I wonder if the act of writing itself does that to you too. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, writing lyrics is a kind of way to um, try to figure out what's going on in my own brain and um, try to find something something positive or if not something positive just try to find like a cathartic release for all the negative emotions in a way that's not going to be totally self-destructive do you get up from writing feeling better than when you sat down generally um yes yes i think i i understand more about myself by the time i've hit the end of a song but where i really feel better is once the four of us have kind of crafted the song together and we get to bang it out uh with amps turned turned high and get to do it um you know the four of us are best friends doing it in in the basement and and being loud and and kind of going through the struggle together is something that uh has been a really positive experience i mean with, with all respect to you guys as artists are there ever moments where you say i don't know man this is a little too heavy this might be a little bit too much to put into a song yeah every day <laughs> is, that, is that so um yeah i you want to you want no to? i have not i mean i assume he's talking about lyrics no, I mean you, you can talk about anything you want, really. I mean, I think I think that that's certainly. I try not to think about it when I'm writing lyrics. Um, you try to separate yourself from it. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like if I censored myself, uh, I would. Um, it would uh, it would be not beneficial to the songs. It wouldn't serve the songs, but definitely at the end of the process, especially when we're kind of in the studio recording it and, you know, there's no turning back. Mm. Um, there'll be like things where it's like, do I really want to say this to the world? 
and you know um the the other guys in pop have been very uh they've been really good sounding boards for that kind of thing as well i think it's yeah like as a ostensibly i'm a listener um i think i enjoy the bluntness of of the the words because they are quite blunt um i think the time for dancing around an issue is over it's long over especially when you're dealing with your own issues and stuff so i i definitely appreciate how blunt it is uh, at the same time there's an end this is not what you guys are doing but I, sometimes i struggle myself with this idea that like transparency itself has become a bit of a commodity like look how transparent i can i can be and, and please buy it by the thing yeah. based on that transparency mm -hmm. i mean it's, it's it's an interesting time where at one point something that was look how honest and real i can be has sort of been corrupted in in, in itself yeah i think i think in some cases it is i the you run into the issue of uh kind of mind reading like trying to assume what people's intentions are and uh i can say for myself that i've tried to be very open uh, without any remuneration of any kind, um, at least on, like my reach is limited, but on social media, I try to be open and hope that if someone's um, reading it, they will feel some comfort and feel more open themselves to mm -hmm to be open about their issues. Yeah, I, d I definitely want to be clear that I'm not talking about no, you no, guys no, or, at, at all. But I, I, I guess I was struck by an article I read about you guys where you guys were talking a little bit about how there's a manipulation of mentally ill people by maybe record labels or by by, by publicists to, you know, somehow that's become a, a commodity that we can sell, where it's actually a quite a tragic or at least something that all of us need to deal with. Yeah, um, there's definitely this kind of, you know, this um, myth of the tortured artist, which is a disgusting think like uh no one should glorify um being miserable or being sad or you know whatever it, it just it it shouldn't be glorified or commodified but it is um and part of the the thing that i hate so much about it is that you know um mental health and mood disorders are things that affect like people from all walks of life it's not it's not an artist thing you know and um and it's something that i've definitely grappled with a lot you know understanding that some of our success is based off of us talking about being failures, you know, um, or us talking about how much we uh, can at times hate ourselves. Um, and, you know, there's a song called Full Blown Meltdown on the, on the new record, and I kind of pretty much bluntly say it in that song, you know, there's a lyric that says, uh, I'll be sure to write it down when I hit rock bottom for all the people who love to fetishize problems. Mm. And I think part of the, the, writing that song for me was just about getting it out into the open and making sure that everybody who listens to this band knows exactly what's going on here. Mm. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, it's something... In the this is kind of my job, you know, like, and I, it's something I think about every single day. If, and I sometimes in, in these interviews, I'll go, well, it's time for me to be a CBC host and <laughs> turn this fun conversation into something that's yeah, incredibly sure. distressing, you know, and like, but I, but I also, also feel like you guys do the opposite as well. Like, and I, I feel like we've talked a lot about kind of heavy duty things here. Mm -hmm. Is that the reason your band's also kind of really funny? Like, is that the reason, is that the reason you guys have this heaviness? Is, is the humor to offset that a little bit or is it more, Am I overthinking it? I mean, a lot of obviously a lot of the time humor is a, it's a deflection device. <laughs> I know I use it a lot personally, um, but I think at least musically, it's just like about juxtaposition and um, you know making it fun by subverting the dark nature of the lyrics, or making it fun by totally leaning into it, like in the case of Full Blown Meltdown. And yeah, um, I don't know. I I. I guess we fight it with humor. I don't know. <laughs> I think we're just like, I think we all realize that like um, we're all really lucky to get to do this and it's a really fun thing for us. Yeah. And so, you know, even though writing songs can, the, a lot of the songs can come from a dark place, you know, like I was talking about before, making these songs with your best friends in a basement and getting to travel the world and play it to, to people who are like-minded is just such a, amazing, rewarding, fun experience. So 
at the end of the day, those those bleak songs start sounding fun yeah. when uh, once the four of us have all kind of injected our own our own uh, personalities into it. I think I'm just realizing that I did the thing that I was for self referencing. <laughs> I was like, so you guys are very funny. Is that a way of counteracting a darkness it's that's very, deep that's deep within? It's very psychological. Oh uh, <laughs> God, of which I I had zero training and all I did was study the auto harp. So this is not working out in my in my favor. Uh, you guys, uh, I want to talk about the. Um, I want, I want to talk about the, the video for free at last. So I just want to get this straight. So you, you put up a chord chart and lyrics to one of your songs. You sent it out. Again, so there was no guide melody. No one knew what the song was going to sound like. Yeah. And, they, and you got them back. So we'll talk about the video in a second. But like, what was it like to sift through a song you wrote interpreted by 250 people in, I'm guessing, 250 different ways? Yeah, it was it was messed up. <laughs> <laughs> it was... Uh... Stefan did the, the bulk of the listening, so... I listened to, uh, I calculated, I think, I don't want to misspeak, but it, I think it was over 14 hours of the same song, but different. Yeah. And it's insane. You know, uh, I was like, <laughs> I couldn't, at the end of it, I couldn't remember what our version sounded like. Oh, was, right. Uh, were there moments where you were like, maybe I should have done that line. That's a good line. Well, yeah. There I'm kind of joking. There <laughs> were No, there were some versions that I was like, no, this is better than ours. Oh, like, no. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is great. Um it was really, uh, it was a, it was, it was a crazy experience. I mean, we had versions that were um, done by professional opera singers. We had, um, you know, hip hop and trap versions, and you know, hardcore bands did it. Polka, polka bands did yeah, you it. Have a polka version. Yeah, like mm -hmm. singer songwriters. It, it was just all over the map. It was just, it was incredible to see. And my brain is just sort of recovering now from the experience. But it, it, but it also must be kind of again. I'm going to CBC this a little bit, but it must be yeah. kind of meaningful. It must be meaningful to yes. see that Extremely. that you're that, that this that you have this relationship with your fans that they have this many people would send something back to you. Mm -hmm. Also, the trust inherent to that. What do you mean? Just like these people are putting themselves out there. Um, like some of them are professional, some of them are not. But I think it's pretty brave for someone who like most people who don't perform. Um, they are willing to put their videos out there at the risk of us like exposing them. And they all like, it's, I think that's amazing that people are that brave. And I think in general, there's just like, there's a lot of gratification that people care that much about our band. Like yeah. that's, so that's been a huge part of it. Um, but yeah, I, it's, it is amazing. Like it's, it's totally crazy. It, that was, that the best. it was the best thing like the best thing we've ever done as a band yeah. for sure and f you know the people who are into this band um are so much a part of this a part a part of the actual band i mean the live show is so dependent on uh the crowd participating and uh and stuff like that so it was kind of in that sense like you know a uh, bit of a love letter to our fans and trying to bring as many people into the fold as as we could um, Zach, you told Exclaim that Pup is for people that hate themselves enough to be willing to suffer through the music industry. <laughs> Not the least bit tongue in cheek. Uh, but I kind of, I kind of liked it, and yeah, I, and I, and, and and I, I, I think what I liked about it so much is that when I look at you guys, is that you, you make these these incredible videos, but also zines. You started your own record label. Like, how much of of, of having the control over the thing that you're doing here is 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 just being able to get through the music industry, which is an intensely awful place sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think uh, Seven can speak to this too, but I think like a lot of it is the process, both of working and having something at the end of the work that you can show for it. And I think that is like the crux of us kind of trying to take the reins with our own label and like being in control of putting out and showing people things that we love personally. Um, and yeah, I, th I think... Yeah, for me, it's just like the creation of stuff. Is this just like the reality of being a band in twenty nineteen? Is that you're you're best equipped if you if you were able to do most of it yourself? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I I think that the, I mean, there's many paths to success, um, uh, but the two that strike me as uh, the most obvious is one, um, being like you know a, a bit of a. Um, a savant or a musical genius, which none of us are at right, all, right. or uh, be willing to work exceptionally hard and learn everything yourself and um, and really just put more effort into it than everybody else. Um, and so that's, you know, we're all, 
we've all been doing this in, in very, not in this band, but in various capacities in different bands for the past 15 years. And we've all spent the past 15 years just absorbing as much knowledge and, um, and just kind of putting in the work to, to make it work on our own. I wonder if that's what it is. Like, I don't, uh, this is not a question I would ever ask you because I wouldn't expect you to know it, but I've often wondered and like why friends of mine who don't like any heavy bands, like again, they only like the auto harp and the penny whistle. <laughs> and please, these are my, these are my people. Are uh, I'm not, I'm not lying. These are the people I spend my time with. Uh, they all like pub, you know, or like friends of mine who like hip hop and they don't like any rock music. They, they all like pub, you know, in addition to being just a really good band like you guys are. But I wonder if you can, you can hear that kind of thing. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. There, I think there's like a, a, a magnetism to being uh, self-deprecating. I think maybe that's a thing. Yeah. Um, that's but... why I keep on bringing up the penny whistles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, as, I, as I mentioned, I'm not going to do the thing where I said I'm not going to ask you about this and then ask you about it. What I am going to ask you is about morbid stuff. Before you play it, can you tell me, um, like, where were you when you wrote this song? Where were you in your life? Um, I was struggling with a lot of things. I mean, I... I, I try not to I do but I try not to make this too much about myself because I I feel like a lot of the lyrics on this record um while I may have written them they're kind of um reflecting a lot of what the other three guys experience as well um I think we all went through uh to varying degrees a pretty dark dark time leading up to the record and um that song is just kind of this examination of uh, what happens when you feel the way that we do at times and you're just sitting alone with your own thoughts. Um, I, at, Zach's, uh, at Zach's suggestion, I, um, I started meditating. And, That's good, hey. Well, it was horrible. Did you find it? Did you ever? I one time found it really painful, like literally, <laughs> physically painful. Oh, really? Physically? Yeah. No, yeah, like, were you I never sitting had... uncomfortably. I think it's just like my my anxiety got to a point where oh, it started yeah. to actually kind of uh, hurt. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember yeah. those feelings. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I think at the beginning, like, yeah, being alone with your own thoughts, especially when your thoughts can be uh, when you're in a dark place, it's it just uh, lots of messed up stuff goes through your brain. But you know, as you I guess as you practice it, I'm I'm definitely not an expert. I'm really bad at it, and I still kind of don't like it, but I do it all a lot. Um, and it is kind of a thing where you can sort of start to quiet those thoughts, but definitely at the beginning, just sitting in silence and thinking about how terrible you think everything is is a pretty messed up experience. So that's kind of where this song came from. <laughs> Anything to say to that, Zach? I, I mean, I think <laughs> if that's what you're doing, that's not the point of meditation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, Hold on. I should have had some guidance, I guess. <laughs> Hold on for a second. Yeah. I thought, nice to meet you guys. Yeah. Nice to meet you.